you know, you're a marketing executive. You're already busy. Why take on this role of <clears throat> relation dating coach? Let me get it right. Dating coach. You know, and let me also clarify that. I like to consider myself a love strategist. And I say that because dating is one thing. Obviously, you have to have a successful dating process to, you know, meet the people that you may be in a romantic relationship with. But I believe it starts with love and loving yourself. And so that's because the best you can then have the best dating experience and attract the best person for you. So um, when I first started this work, I had married my husband and everyone was asking, how did you do that? And so (laughs) the dating process seems the natural default, right? But then when you get more granular, which is what was the inspiration of the book, you realize that it's the journey of finding yourself that then translates into attracting the person that aligns with you and the two of you elevate each other. So yeah, I'll clarify that piece. (laughs) Right. So, okay. Relationship strategist. Got it. Um, And you did, you, you mentioned marrying your husband. Um, You didn't, you guys didn't marry in college. I mean, you married already pretty established in life, right? Absolutely. So I married my husband when I was 51. We met when I was 50. Um, and we married at 51. So very established. (laughs) Yeah, right. So, and a lot of people, and you, and you cite these uh, statistics in your, in your bio and in your book, a lot of people talk about how black women in particular are married later, are less likely to stay married, less likely to get married at all ever in life. And I feel like some of what we put forth in popular culture, particularly on reality shows and TV talk shows is that we're less desirable. And so therefore, um, even our men would rather be with someone else. The statistics, by the way, don't support that, but that's the narrative. Correct. Correct. And that's what society has um, told us. And I'm one who believes that, you know, the culture in which was created in the United States of America don't favor black people and people of color. So the narrative out there is the one that's been created for us. And because that's kind of in our subconscious, it's the one that we kind of allow to help us navigate. But to your point, the stats don't show that out. And I, you know, although it's a microcosm, I tell people all the time, I had 80 people at my wedding because we got married during the pandemic, 60 of them were couples, you know, and so black strong marriages and that's what i see because it's what i choose to see it's what i tell myself i know there are amazing black men out there they're amazing black families black couples and the other thing is a lot of research is done by certain is done of certain populations so when we look at some of the stats um, there's a professor at university of kentucky in louisville that says a lot of the academic research is on um uh, folks in lower socioeconomic um, uh, categories. And so I think across all cultures, if your primary data comes from people in a certain subset, you're going to get a certain outcome. What we don't see when we talk about, you know, single black women and things like that and black men and status of family is how many black men are adjacent to their families. They may not live in the home, but they may be you know, a couple blocks away, or they may be the parent that the child has every weekend or the coach of the basketball team. So it's really, really important for us. And I talk about this in the book, Second second Act, it's really important of what's the information that we consume and how do we, you know, uh, digest that and then, you know, go out into the world. If we say there are no black men out there, there won't be because you're saying that thoughts become things, words become your world. But if you know that there are amazing black men out there, which there are that want healthy and happy relationships, then that's the way you navigate. And it, and it, you can manifest that. As I told one of my girlfriends, you only need one. And uh, she yeah. found her one. I, I need to get that attitude for myself. But <laughs> she, she found you she, only need one. You only need when she was crying, talking about that. You know that. Oh no, there's no one. But you only need one. You don't need hundreds of millions. You just need the one that's you, your person. You don't. Yep. You absolutely just need the one that's your person. And you know, I say date regularly. Date 
them all until that one shows up and proves himself worthy of you. So often we'll date a person, we'll meet him, we'll like him, and then we'll latch on to him like that's the only man left in the world, and that has to be your husband. I rotational dated. I dated many different men, and my husband was the cream of the crop, and he showed why he should be my husband, and that's how it all worked. But I did not look at him like, you're my husband. I looked at him and said, hey, I am dating for marriage, and that is the goal, and that's what I desire. I think I should be someone's wife. That's where I have my most value, and um, I will continue to date until someone shows me that he should be my husband. (laughs) Cherie, what is rotational dating? And, you know, not everybody got a whole lineup bullpen, you know, people (laughs) calling them night and day. I mean, that's, you know, not everybody has all those choices. Like, "Mm, you prove yourself. Are you bachelor number five? Yeah, so explain <laughs> rotational dating real quick, and then we'll, we'll touch yeah. on the rest when we come forward. Yeah, so rotational dating is just dating multiple people. Again, you don't have to be intimate with them because that's where rotational dating gets a little bit of a bad rap. You don't have to be intimate with everyone that you meet. Dating is just collecting information. It's just collecting data. It's just getting to know someone. It's just assessing them, them assessing you to see if you're, A, compatible as even friends first, and then to decide if you want to move forward in a romantic relationship. So I had dated online during the pandemic, met several great gentlemen, you know, dating was limited at that time, but went for walks or, you know, had coffee talks via Zoom and things like that. And so my husband was one of those. And I didn't lock into him and say, oh, this is going to be my husband. I locked into him and said, this is a great guy that we have a lot in common and let's explore this. So that's what I mean by rotational dating. Author and marketing executive Cherie Syfax is our guest, and you're welcome to join in if you've got a question, comment, or your own hot take on what it takes to be happy and successful in a relationship. Give me a call, 800-920-1580. You're listening to KBLA Talk 1580, where we're amplifying black and progressive voices around the clock. The station you turn to when you've had it up to here with cultural incompetence. KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. about. KBLA Talk 1580 joins you in standing for education as a right, not a privilege. Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science is a private, nonprofit, community founded, student centered university committed to cultivating diverse health profession leaders who are dedicated to social justice and health equity for underserved populations. CDU does this through outstanding education, clinical service, and community engagement. Recently, Charles Drew University made history by opening only the fifth medical school at an historically black university. Congratulations, South LA, and congratulations to the dean of the medical school, Dr. Deborah Protho Stith. CDU is now training doctors and providing $90 million in annual economic benefit to Watts and surrounding neighborhoods. To apply for medical school, get more information, or sign your child up for the Junior Doctors Saturday School Program, visit cdrewu.edu. That's cdrewu.edu. At KBLA, we are dedicated to equity in education and ending health care apartheid. And we don't black down. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. Periods don't care what you're doing, but your pads should. Get Always Triple Protection System in Always Day and Night Pads. Always Day Pads protect when active by wicking away gushes two times faster than leading store brands and giving us up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort. When we size up our pad at night, we get the same triple protection, plus up to 75% more coverage in the back for when we're laying down. No matter what, Always has you covered. Day and night. Some people won't give you the real talk on drugs, but it's time we know the facts. Fentanyl is killing people. It's a powerful opioid, often made illegally and commonly mixed with illicit drugs. It can even be pressed into counterfeit pills that resemble prescription medications. Just two milligrams, about the size of a few grains of sand, could potentially be lethal. This isn't an ad to scare you, but it is an ad to make you think twice. Get the facts. Go to realdealonfentanyl.com. 
This message is brought to you by the Ad Council. Here at NerdWallet, we often see people struggle with financial decisions, like with Helen. Hey, Helen. Hello. Hello. Uh, Helen, you're all over the place. Uh, I'm trying to pick a rewards credit card, and I've ended up, well, everywhere. 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 With NerdWallet, you don't have to feel all over the place. NerdWallet has side-by-side comparisons of top credit cards. So whether you need a card for groceries or travel, the smartest card for you is right there. Wow. 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 Now I'm in one place with the right travel rewards card. Nice. Nice indeed. NerdWallet, the smartest decision for all your financial decisions. Thanks for waking up with Dominique De Prima on KBLA Talk 1580. I do appreciate you, and it's uh, time to talk relationships. We don't do enough of that around here. If you got something to say, call me, 800-920-1580. We're talking with Cherie Syfax. She's the author of Second Act, Living Boldly and Abundantly at Every Age. Okay, so like many people, I don't want to be a stereotype myself, but like many women, I do spend time with my girlfriends talking about mm-hmm. relationships, talking about men. Why is he doing this and why isn't he doing that? And, you know, all the all this stuff. So you all the stuff, s- all, the stuff <laughs> all the things, right? Analyzing, uh, analyzing situations, sending each other memes, trying to <laughs> affirm each other and uplift each other. But here's the thing. You said something I hear all the time. Oh, you got to work on yourself and love yourself. And then the right man is going to come along. I mean, so, I mean, I understand the spirit of that because we should be focused on ourselves anyway. We shouldn't be desperately seeking anything, a job, a man, enlightenment, money. But Correct. But on the other hand, it's like, uh, how perfect do I have to be? Like, how long is this working on going to take? I mean, I feel like there's a side of that that seems very... mm, theoretical. (laughs) Yeah. And I I don't disagree with you because work without action is dead, right? So there's the part of your evolution and your growth as a person. So for me, and I talk about this in second act, um, often I was trying to fit into a relationship for all these reasons that have very little to do with who I was. It was who I thought society who who society made me think I should be with. So when I worked on myself, then I got my own worthiness and my own confidence to know that just because he's a lawyer, that doesn't mean he's the best person for me. And I need to stop trying to stick a round peg into a square circle because society says, because he has these things behind his name that I need to be attracted to him. And I need to try to make that work by all costs. So that's where the working on me piece came. Now the action piece comes with how do I engage when there's conflict? The action comes in with how do I share with somebody what my goals are, what my values are, what my alignment, what, how am I aligned? How do I have conversations? If a guy does something that I don't, like he doesn't call me enough. He doesn't um, initiate stuff. How do I communicate that impactfully and effectively to him? Because what I don't want to do is assume, oh, this guy just isn't doing this, that, and the other. My husband in the beginning did not call me as often as other men did, although I really, really liked him. And he said he really, really liked me. So I had to communicate to him who I was. I'm an only child. I am spoiled. I was the first grandchild. I was the only girl. I mean, there's all these reasons why me knowing me helps me communicate to him. So my grandfather, my father, the people in general in my life dote on me. And so if a man is going to come into my life and he says he's interested in me, he needs to dote on me similarly for me based on my own experience to feel that like or that care. So I had to communicate with him. So that's why I need this. Is that something that you can do? And he said, absolutely. I didn't want you to think I was stalking you. So then he stepped his game up. I mean, and so I could have said, hmm, I wonder why he's not calling me. He's probably with somebody else. I could have been passive aggressive. What, you was with your other girlfriend? That's why you couldn't call me? Like, we do, if we're mm-hmm. honest with ourselves. Mm-hmm. And instead, I said, no, this is who I am. This is what I need from someone who's going to be significant in my life. Can you do that? Because he may have said, you know what? I'm not capable of that. And you know what? We would have just been friends. I would not have tried to stick a square peg into a round hole. He can't meet a need that is a value for me. So the me loving me, the me knowing who I am, A, made me know what I need from somebody else, but also the me valuing me and loving me said, even though I like this man, he is handsome, he's successful, I don't have to need to force myself to be with him because loving me is sufficient. 
So for me, when I talk about that, it's not as theoretical. To me, I feel like it's very, very factual. Mm. Yeah, it's very literal. I mean, that's a good way of looking at it. Pastor Eddie Anderson, who was on with me, my millennial pastor friend who was on with me earlier today, said, set ground rules. It sounds a little bit Mm -hmm. like that's what you're doing when you say, hey, you know, I... I like to be called a lot or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Is that, I mean, were there other things like that in terms of, you know, getting what you wanted rather than just being, here's the thing. Um, mm-hmm. Men always say, well, I can't read your mind. So if you don't tell me what you want, uh, I don't know. But then on the other and hand, that's that's they, they like to say, why are you nagging me? Why are you asking me to do things? If I wanted to do it, I would do it. Because I felt it. And and we know that people make time and energy for things they want to do. So it seems like a weird balance, right, between asking for what you want and then kind of seeing, you know, how they flow without you constantly ask, you know, asking for it. Right. And also you want people to do things because they want to do them. Correct. And so you're absolutely right. So me sharing with you who I am and what I need, then I need to take a step back and observe if you're able to do that consistently. If you are great, we can continue on. If you're not, again, you're, we're just could be friends and maybe a different time for us, but I am no longer feeling like I need where, where I have gotten heartache, where my girlfriends have gotten heartache. I'm sure where you and your girlfriends have gotten heartache is trying to stay in something too long. That's not for us. Period. And it's, that's what it comes down to. If he, it is so true. Men will do what they want to do. And for the right woman, they say, you can be with the same man and I'll be with, two women can be with the same man and I'll be with the same man. It's things my husband does for me that I'm sure he, and he will tell you, he's never done for anybody else. He didn't do for his ex-wife because we are aligned differently. So again, it's about me communicating what I need, observing if you can provide it. And if you can't, I'm not going to, in quotes in the air, nag you about it. I don't have to have communication and conversation with people multiple times, not adults. And this also carries over (laughs) in my friendships. It carries over in my professional life. It carries over in my social life, just right fitting people where they fit. And not feeling like I don't have to beat you over the head. You know, my professional in our professional life, if we're doing that, we're difficult, we're aggressive, we're all the things. I don't have to prove my worthiness to anybody else because I love myself and I prove my worthiness to myself. Everyone else around me, we all get the benefits of a reciprocal respect, but I don't have to beat you over the head. I'm just, that, that's just not what I'm interested in doing at this phase of my life. What I'm interested in doing is living a life of ease and flow, and that requires that I learn how to communicate with people in a way that's impactful, whether it's romantic and, or otherwise. Yeah, I love that. You shouldn't have to say things over and over again since we're grown And I think you're right. A lot of times we stay too long. Well, maybe it'll be better if, or maybe, you know, when they get to know me, or maybe they're going through a thing or whatever the thing is. And I think that's also true for women, by the way. If you find yourself never having time for someone, that means you really don't like them that much because (laughs) when you do, you will make the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, you absolutely will. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So how do you know when it's time to jump off, to jump out of, of consideration with a particular prospect? You said you should not, you said what you wanted or what you needed as a, you know, as a person who knows themselves, you faded Mm -hmm. back a little bit to see if they were able to deliver that. At what point do you say, yeah, yeah, we're going to be friends. Yeah. And I talk about it several times in my book. So that's why everyone needs to go out and get it. I was with a gentleman, a great gentleman, a lawyer, one who communicated very well. We had differences in finances and how he um, saw finances between us. I observed, I saw, I communicated and he didn't deliver in the way that I needed him to. So I said, hey, we're both great people, but I just don't think that we're great for each other. I'm going to let you go out into the world and find that person for you, and I'm going to release myself from you and find the person for me. I'm so glad that I did because my husband came shortly thereafter. So it just was, for me, observation over a a period of time, enough time where I knew I had done the things that I felt like I needed to do, and I hadn't gotten the result that I was looking for, so I moved on. and. As I continued to evolve in, again, that loving of myself, that got, got shorter and shorter. I used, I was in a relationship that I talk about for 10 years. Never again will I waste my time like that. You know what I mean? Like, I was trying to make that relationship work forever through distrust and dishonesty and all the things. 
And so, you know, really early, I mean, when you're so, when you're in tune with yourself, your intuition lets you know, your discernment, we all know, we know of that whisper, Oprah talks about it, (laughs) that whisper, it came way before the wind, way before the craziness. And we just chose to not look at it. It's like those yellow flags. We choose not to look at those yellow flags to assess, and then we'll go right through the red flags. And that is male or female, and I'm not putting this all on women, but that's for all of us to to observe. When we see those red flags, why continue to proceed forward? You don't run through a red light, so you shouldn't run through red light in relationship. And I don't know that we put enough value on relationship as we do other things. And so as a result, then we continue. When a job's not working for us, Sometimes we choose to leave. If school's not working for us, we'll choose another thing of a friendship. But in relationship, we'll stick it out, you know, and that's just not necessary. Yeah, I think um, (laughs) there's so many things here. You said you you got stopped dating the lawyer and then your husband came into your life shortly thereafter. You also mentioned rotational dating and not just latching on to one guy because you think he has potential, but continuing to see others until he proves himself to be your person. Those seem to be a little bit at odds. Here's one of the conversations we always have is that, that you've got to let everybody go from your life. You know, the people you're dating rotationally, your friend with benefits, your ex, all of those people have to be cleared out to make room for somebody new. Or is it that you're supposed to be keeping the energy circulating and dating a bunch of folks until you find the right person? Those seem like they're at odds with each other. So it's one to be in a committed relationship. So I was with the lawyer. We were in a relationship. So I did not rotational date at that point. So we had chosen to be in a relationship. So the status is different, communicating what our status is. So the rotational dating was just that rotational dating. Everybody that I was dating knew I was dating other people. So the two distinctly different things. Now... When, to your point, and I love that you talked about that, because a lot of times when we're engaging with men, it just helps. Like for me, engaging with multiple men just kept me in a certain space. It kept me keep really great men around me, just helped me ease into, I think, who I naturally am. I know there's so much conversation around femininity and all that, but I just think for me, who I naturally am, I'm more traditional. I don't want to always lead. I don't want to always have to take the lead. And so having really great men around me helps me relax into that more um, receiving uh, energy. And so when my husband came along, it just was easy for me to continue in that natural state. So that was the benefit for me for rotational dating. Um, and again, if he was busy, which my husband is a very busy entrepreneur, then I wasn't like, oh my God, he hasn't called me. Oh my God, I haven't heard from him. And we do that too, because I'm busy with other people. So if he didn't call me one time, somebody else sure was. If I wasn't going out with him one time, I may have been going out with somebody else. So it helped because I would have latched onto him in a desperate way and men sense desperation and we don't want to date in that space either. So if we have abundance around us, then we're not feeling like the man that you like is the last man on earth. So just you <laughs> date differently. Okay. One of my other opinionated friends just texted me and, and asked, have anyone ever told you that you didn't meet their needs and they were going to move on and say, you know, you were, they dated you and they were like, nah, you're not the one. No, because I don't think people naturally communicate that, honestly. Yeah, that's true. They just fade to black. I think I think either they fade out or you stay in it, um, they stay in it begrudgingly until something major happens. But no, I don't. And as a matter of fact, my ex was said that that's the first time someone had a healthy conversation with him about breaking up and we're still friends. And my husband said that was the first time someone had actually told him that they were dating other people and what their intention was and were married. Mm. Well, I mean, I guess everyone has a different way of communicating, but, um, you know, being, being straight ahead, it's not that easy all the time because people want it. They want, they want an illusion. I think a lot of people want an illusion, but I kind of feel like that has to be the default at some point, especially once you're in a serious relationship, you can find a nice way to say the tough thing. Uh, we've got news, traffic, and sports, and then we're going to continue our conversation with Cherie Syfax, author of Second Act, Living Boldly and Abundantly at Every Age. I'm Dominique DePrima for KBLA Talk 1580. More of First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. 
Thank you for joining us on this Monday. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. The nation is once again grieving after two more mass shootings. In a statement Sunday, President Biden called gun violence outrageous and unacceptable while slamming Republican lawmakers for not acting on the issue. A shooting at a teen's birthday party in Alabama left at least four dead and more than a dozen injured Saturday night. Also, two people died and at least four were injured following a shooting at a park in Kentucky. Now to the city of Akron, Ohio, where it's continuing to watch and wait as a special grand jury considers possible indictments against eight officers involved in last summer's shooting death of African-American Jalen Walker. Court observers predict a decision could come early this week. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Starting with a crash in now, Hammer, two left lanes are blocked on the 10 westbound at Atlantic Boulevard. And right now, traffic is stop and go starting at Garfield Avenue. Crash in Mid-City LA made it to the right-hand shoulder on the 10 westbound at La Brea Avenue. That was adding to a slow drive for Normandy Avenue. And watch for crash just reported now in Long Beach on the 710 southbound at Long Beach Boulevard. Left lane blocked off by those vehicles, the 710 slowing down back at Rosecrans Avenue. Vehicles sold in Long Beach 91 Eastman to Paramount. That's stuck in the carpool lane. Looking for a late night spot to get the crew together? Three words, Buffalo Wild Wings. They've got drinks and apps starting at $4. From 10 p.m. till close, B-dubs, where late night food and drinks start at $4. Cheers to that. Limited time at participating locations. Offers days and times may vary. Drink responsibly. Void or prohibited. Tax and fees extra. This, this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. A very impressive debut in the NBA playoffs for the Lakers and Clippers. The Lakers win by 16 in Memphis. The Clippers hold on for a five-point win in Phoenix. Four Laker players scored 20 or more. Rui Hachimura had 29 off the bench. John Moran suffered a serious injury to his right hand when he fell hard to the floor on a drive to the basket. Moran is doubtful for game two Wednesday night. Tip off at 4.30 on TNT. The Clippers get 38 from Kawhi Leonard to hold off Phoenix. Nine points, 11 rebounds, three block shots, two steals, and five offensive rebounds. Game two for the Clippers and Phoenix is Tuesday at 7 on TNT. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. Talk 1580, we do more than just talk. Hey there, I'm Jared Hill, president of the National Association of Black Journalists of Los Angeles, and I just want to say thank you for the benevolent $10,000 donation and scholarships for the next generation of black journalists. And I'm Haywood Galbraith, photojournalist and founder of the Minority Photojournalism Institute. Thanks, KBLA, for your generous $10,000 scholarship gift to help us train the next generation of black photojournalists. Congratulations to all the students who will benefit from the scholarship dollars raised at our Black History Month luncheon. Honoring black legends in L.A. media. When we come forward at KBLA Talk 1580, we're bringing everybody with us. Everybody with us. The Los Angeles Urban League and Parkside Economic Development Corporation are working to close the wealth gap between black and white households. B-Warp, the Black Wealth Attainment and Retention Program's free virtual workshops will help your family acquire, gain, maintain, and pass down legacy wealth. Learn from the experts about making more with what you have. The Black History of Money, joining the Smart Investors Club, preserving your assets in tough times, crypto, cash in or cash out, the wealthy mind and body. Register for this free series that could change your financial future at laul.org slash b-w-a-a-r-p don't miss b Warp, the black wealth attainment and retention program every second and fourth thursday in february march and april at 6 p.m pacific time register now at laul.org slash b-w-a-a-r-p KBLA Talk 1580 would like to thank all of the businesses that tune into KBLA at work. We celebrate you, your calls to the station, and your overall support. To show our appreciation, we would like to treat your office to a lunch for 10. Brought to you by the original Taco Pete's. Open the KBLA Talk 1580 app or log on to KBLA1580.com to submit your office to be selected for our office of the week. We know you're just like our staff, putting in many hard, smart working hours per week. We just want to say thank you and we appreciate you. 
You and your staff deserve lunch on us. Enter your office to win lunch for 10 and be highlighted on KBLA Talk 1580 as our office of the week. Open the KBLA app or log on to KBLA 1580 to enter your office today to become the KBLA Talk 1580 Office of the Week, sponsored by the original Taco Pete's, a black-owned restaurant. Become the KBLA Talk 1580 Office of the Week. This has been a KBLA Talk 1580 community call to action. I know. KBLA Talk 1580, where hate meets a scholarly match. It is my opinionated friend's take on relationships. My opinionated friend today, a new friend. She's a author of a biography, Second Act, Living Boldly and Abundantly at Every Age. And her book, um, among other things, is a testament to the fact that it's never too late to revitalize your love life, social circle, or career. You think we just give up on ourselves and say, okay, I'm over the hill and I'm just going to be lonely for the rest of my life? I hear that often, um, unfortunately, because I don't think that that's the case, but I definitely do think that there is so much out there that says women, especially black women at certain ages, won't attract and find love. And that just does not have to be the case. And so I think when you throw in the towel that way, there's times when maybe we don't take care of ourselves the same way, or there's times when maybe someone approaches you and you just don't want to be bothered because you have that unbothered energy. I mean, I just think there's certain things that can come with that mindset that then almost make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. (laughs) Are, Are you, I mean, here's of course always the danger with even these conversations, let alone books that we're defining ourselves as successful or not successful based on whether or not we're in a relationship or a marriage. No, well, that's not what my book is about. My book is about my own journey to finding me and then attracting love. But at the same token, it also encourages and reminds women how amazing and worthy and valuable we are, no matter what our status is. I had an amazing single season, an amazing single season, and that did not define me. Now, getting married definitely put me in the spotlight, and I think it had everything to do with, one, during the pandemic— Two, I was 50. My husband's older. I think, you know, aesthetically, we look like a great black couple. Um, We have really done some amazing things together. And so it shows what could potentially happen. And so that is why. But I feel no more valuable or worthy because I'm married. I was this person single. I I just desired marriage. So there's people who don't. And they're full and comfortable. And, you know, I, I guess to me, it's just the same thing as people saying, I don't date black women. You know, I, I just think that there's certain things that we don't rule out. Like, hey, I'm, I'm just happy single, and that's fine. It has nothing to do with being married does not, the same way that I'm saying that all the societal norms don't have to define how you stay in a relationship is the same way that to me societal norms do not have to define you being in a relationship. You can choose that. I'm just clear on choosing that for healthy reasons. I hear the conversation, oh, you're not going to disturb my peace. Well, somebody can't disturb your peace unless you allow them to. (laughs) A relationship does not have to be synonymous with disturbing peace. I'm very peaceful. Me and my husband are very peaceful. And I mean, we have a lot going on. We just bought a restaurant. I just wrote a book. Like we, I have a very, you know, demanding and a lot of responsibility job, but I live in great peace. A, because I was peaceful as a single person. And my husband compliments me. So it's just for me, the conversation around if I don't want to be married, I believe that, again, the health around that conversation just needs to be you just don't want to be married, not believing that a man is going to bring black black peace or he's going to bring you down or like those negative those negative thoughts around it. Because if you have those negative thoughts around it, then there's still some, in my opinion, work that needs to be done just to get you to a place of completion alone. And then you don't even have to have the conversation around being peaceful or not peaceful without a man, with or without a man. Yeah. One of the big uh, memes that you see a lot on the, um, at least on Instagram and Twitter these days is about how, Oh yeah, I want to have a partner. I want to have a love of my life, but that means I have to go outside of the house. (laughs) It means I have to go meet people (laughs) to put on clothes and actually go to a place. Actually do something. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so when you say, you know, we, we you reject the notion that the best the best years of our lives are behind us, um, you know, it, it, is that how you see it? Do you think we just were not doing enough? We're staying home wishing that, you know, Prince or Princess Charming would knock on our door 
Um, or- yeah, you because know, I talk. Yeah, and in the book, I talk about I, why I believe this is my best time. I know me best. I'm able to have those conversations with some with some confidence, um, intimately. I know what makes me feel good and what doesn't, and I know how to say it without hurting my partner's feelings. I mean, there's just so many things that I just know about myself that I had no clue about when I was twenty, twenty five, thirty, you know, thirty five. So I don't. I think these are the good times to find someone or to attract a really great partner at this point in my life. Financial Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, mentally has been so much more amazing than all the relationships that I had before when I just, you know, didn't have the words, resources, or reference. And that's another thing with the book. It's just, even when you're younger, like some of the mistakes I made, some of the shame I felt, some of the guilt, some of the indecisiveness, like this is just to say, hey, you're going to have that but utilize it to make the next move the best move. Or maybe you read the book and maybe you don't make that decision. Or maybe you read the book and you don't stay in that relationship for 10 years. You're like, hey, this isn't working for me and having the confidence to have a conversation. And before the last segment, we were talking about communication styles. I use the same communication style in work. So it's not just about relationship. I commend people when I have to give them information that could be challenging. We have a challenging conversation and I commend them again. We, the skills are utilized in every aspect of our lives. It's not just in relationships. So even though we do all communicate differently, impactful and effective communication, healthy communication is good all across the board. Yeah, that's a great point. What do you think are the mistakes that we're making? I mean, you have the conversations I'm sure with your girlfriend, some married and some probably going, how did you get so lucky? Um, <laughs> So what, yeah. so what do you, you know, generally say besides you have to leave the house? Right. <laughs> you know, and a lot of it is, you know, we come through the door what we're not going to do. We come to the door with our titles and our education and what we do at work. And it's, and, and it's rare that we just talk about who we are. Who are you? What my value is has zero to do with my job. It has zero to do with my education because that stuff didn't teach me how to be the person I need to be for my husband. My husband is successful. He doesn't care. I, my, and I used to laugh, and I still think he doesn't know. We're, you know, we're coming up on a, a, another anniversary. I don't think my husband knows what school I went to, nor does he know what degree I have. He just knows I have a job that, you know, I have a lot of responsibility. But those things just aren't important, and I think – Again, society, especially for black women, have put a lot of emphasis on strength and strong and doing all these things and having all these titles and title being such a big, you know, deal in our communities and things like that. And I, you know, from the conversations, the research that I've done with men that are really kind of the healthy provider men, that just isn't something that's important to them, but we put a lot of emphasis on that. Um, and so I think there's just a, quite a few of those different things that, you know, the man that, and, and men, and there are some men that are intimidated and, and those aren't the men, but there's this conversation around men being intimidated. And my husband tells me all the time, I'm not intimidated by anybody. I just don't know that I want to be bothered if all we're talking about is your career and your PhDs and your, and, and, that, and that, none of that's wrong because I have advanced degrees, but that's just not anything that consumes our conversation. It's what we are lined on in the community, how we want to do business, what we want to leave our family, what's our family legacy, how we want to love and enjoy each other. Um, it's, it's those things, you know, how when we're struggling with something, how do we create a safe space for each other? It's, it's that. It's not, it's not some of the things that I think there's a superficial layer that we have to get vulnerable to get beyond so that we can connect with a man's heart. We're always, we're connecting with our head and when we connect with our head, they can move on. We connect with their heart. They can't live without us. And that's where we want to be in their heart. Connecting with the heart, not with the head. Yeah. I think it sounds like almost like you're saying something which I hear a lot more of now, which is that as black women, we want the man to have all these certain things too. If we have the checklist of advanced degrees and accomplishments at work, we want him to have those same things. And we are ruling out people that we maybe ought to be considering. Is that part of it? That, that's part of it. It's so funny. I, I have a newsletter that goes out um, on our website, uh, www.justthefacts.com. In fact, it's P-H-A-X for our last name. And the newsletter today was just about that because it is Second Chance Month. And with the book Second Act, you know, things can change um, at different times and mistakes in your life don't have to impact you. My husband's formerly incarcerated. So I can tell you 10 years ago, and that's what we talk about in the O Magazine, 10 years ago, he would not have been on my list. 
but one of the most amazing, giving, compassionate, patient men I know. I was with a man that had was a lawyer, like I said, but insecure. I talk about him in the book, insecure, kind of hiding behind the veneer of the degree. So would I say go recklessly date? No, I wouldn't. But I would say our vetting process needs to be more aligned with who people are in their character. Get to know that more so than, you know, any, again, of those surface things that don't really show you how a man is going to treat you in the trenches. And I mean, I have experience with, you know, my husband being very, very nurturing during a time when I was having some female issues and had to ultimately have surgery that a lot of men probably would have not not been patient with me. So, um, yeah, I just think that he does not have to have the same pedigree that I have, if, you know, if you kind of put it in those, that context. But when we talk about community, he's completely engaged and gives of himself. When we talk about, you know, and again, a lot of people that I used to write checks to community organizations, he not only writes checks, but he does the work. That to me is much more impressive than you being able to write a check. Mm-hmm. We're in a position where we can, but even if he didn't, his character is so valuable and he would still be doing the work. So it's just those types of things that I think we look over and we miss out on great opportunity. Continuing our conversation, I have got a question from someone who couldn't stay on the phone uh, regarding something you said when we come forward. And it's not too late to call 800 920 1580. It's KBLA Talk 1580. She's reclaiming her time on KBLA Talk 1580. More first things first with Dominic DePrima when we come forward. Personal Lynn Law Office is your go-to attorney for criminal cases. We will work with you at every step to ensure you are fully informed and your rights are protected. Call me at 424-261-2075 if you're facing any criminal offenses. Twitter Inc. no longer exists. Maisha Cairo here with your K Black Minute News brought to you by Lendistry. Twitter Inc. no longer exists. Its incorporated name is now X Corp. This is the name of its owner and CEO, Elon Musk's long envisioned everything app. This is a credit to Musk's aspirations for the company. He's quoted saying he wants to turn X into the biggest financial institution in the world. Confused? Well, he'd like to turn the app into a wide-ranging service, something like China's WeChat. Like a peer-to-peer mobile payment platform where users can earn interest on their cash like at a bank. He has also suggested several services in-app, including ride-hailing and food delivery. Give us your thoughts on X and more on on Twitter at KBLA 1580. Oh, man, look, look. Our weekly Los Angeles is the largest audited black newspaper in the state of California with a distribution of over 50,000 copies weekly. Pick up a copy every Thursday to get the latest news on African-American communities of L.A. You can also keep up with what's going on in Los Angeles and surrounding cities by going to www.ourweekly.com. The Our Weekly website is updated daily with the current news about us and for us. For your advertising needs, Our Weekly offers economical advertising packages to fit your budget. Feel free to call Our Weekly Los Angeles at 323-905-1300 or visit the website at www.ourweekly.com. Our Weekly Los Angeles, reporting news that matters to you. Some people won't give you the real talk on drugs, but it's time we know the facts. Fentanyl is killing people. It's a powerful opioid, often made illegally and commonly mixed with illicit drugs. It can even be pressed into counterfeit pills that resemble prescription medications. Just two milligrams, about the size of a few grains of sand, could potentially be lethal. This isn't an ad to scare you, but it is an ad to make you think twice. Get the facts. Go to realdealonfentanyl.com. This message is brought to you by the Ad Council. At KBLA Talk 1580, we do more than just talk. You got a big mouth. Hello, Joe, you're up. Welcome. We're unapologetically progressive, and we don't black down. And we don't, and we're talking relationships. Got to do that. We're doing it next Monday, too. Next Monday is Black Marriage Monday with Ayana and Isaiah Ma'at, who are therapists. So um, Yvonne uh, called, and she can't stay on the phone. She says that um, she wants to know, you know, where you're finding all these great men. She says she meets plenty of men, but she's not attracted to them. She says she looks very young. She attracts younger men that she's physically attracted to, but they're not on her level. They're not established. They're broke. She said, then the men her own age, they haven't taken care of themselves 
and they are looking and acting old, which means, I mean, she's saying they don't have to be, you know, they don't have to be Dwayne the Rock Johnson, but she wants them to at least have taken care of themselves. So she, she is not, and and that's I guess what I was kind of referring to when I jokingly said not everybody has a a, a lineup to be even rotationally dating. Well, you know, it, so when she says that the younger men aren't on her level or the older men haven't taken care, has she kind of settled into just thinking that that's the way it is? Or is she just taking care of herself, minding her business and attracting certain people? Because a lot of times someone may, when you say you're not on your level, what does that mean? They don't have the same finances that she has. They're not, you know, what has she decided is her level? Well, she said he's, she says he's got to have something. He's got to have his own place, some money. He doesn't have to be like rich or anything, but he can't be looking for a sugar mama for somebody to pay for everything. And, you know, she's not going to waste her time dating someone like that. And sometimes when we hear this thing about, you know, open up your horizons more, don't be so narrow, it feels like don't have standards. But then on the other hand, I do know that there are women that are, you know, so caught up with their degrees and their status that they they might overlook someone who is great but doesn't match some kind of checklist or profile. Correct. And and I would say in that particular case, is she dating them? Is she just enjoying herself? Because when you have just a fabulous life, then some fabulous man wants to participate in that life. That's what my husband talks about all the time. He said, your profile looks so amazing. I wanted to live that life with you. So that's what I would do. I would just, I would date people, even if they didn't meet particular criteria that I had, because one, it gets you used to dating, it gets you in dating energy. If your energy is always, they don't fit, they don't fit, they don't fit, they don't fit, then it's easy for you to just say they don't fit. You may, you might not, you may have to date a couple people and then just start that flow of energy. It goes both ways. You have to bring it in and then that right person could be out there. But if you are already kind of like blocking people off from the jump, and and I don't know her whole experience, but if you're already blocking people off, because that's what it sounds like to me with all the millions of people that are in the world and, you know, all the different ethnicities and, and whatnot, I can't imagine that there's nobody out there to me. They're just not. I mean, that's just not the case. But if I'm blocking people off because I'm saying, oh, he's young and he doesn't have meet my standards, oh, he's old and he's washed up, then it seems like I've kind of excluded, you know, a bunch of people. So is she letting anybody in? Yeah, it's a good question. But if I know for sure that I'm not attracted to you, I'm just not attracted to you, I should go on a date with you anyway? I mean... You know, it's fu- it, cause funny you say that because I have these conversations with my girlfriends too. It's like, oh, I'm not meeting anyone. And then you ask them and actually they've met a lot of people just knowing that they liked. Well, you don't know if you like someone at first glance. I mean, you have to get to know people. It's a process. You don't know if you want that job. You don't know if you want that house. You go and look at a million houses before you buy the one. Why do we exclude from the jump on any and, and dating? Because we don't usually, now it changes, but usually the first house isn't the house you want. It's usually you kind of, your realtor sets you up on a couple of different things and you just go check them out because it's worth it. You start to say, oh, okay, well, I really like those windows, but I don't like that door. Okay, well, that one, I know I want those windows. And then you go to the next one, mm, I like those windows and that this, but I'd want a patio. So it's kind of a process has to start. And if you don't start anywhere... Because, I mean, I don't know how I, you just like someone instantly. That's not always how it works. All right. We are, <laughs> we're talking with Sharice Syfax. We're talking 11 relationships. I want to get your, um, when we come forward, it'll be just a few minutes before we pass the microphone to Tavis Smiley, who comes on after me daily. And I want to know what you want us to be thinking about this week when we're manifesting the love of our lives um, or just keeping things right with the relationship we're in and maybe elevating that. It's KBLA Talk 1580. We may be LA's newest talk station, but when you're punching above your weight, it's not about whether you can throw a punch. Can you take a punch? We're unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. And we don't black down. Coming to Los Angeles. It's the show that walked the country playing to over 1.5 million people. It's 
God's trying to tell you something. Coming to the Wolfshire Ebell Theater. For one day only. Saturday, April 22nd at 2 and 7 p.m. See what everyone is talking about. And feel the power of God. So this was the bomb. I loved it. It was really, really good. Amazing scene. And the performers were fantastic. A little crying. It was a lot of laughter. My kids was like, Mom, what's wrong? Because I started to cry. And I said, these are just tears of joy. It met and exceeded the expectations. It was very well presented, and everybody did great. It was fantastic. I felt like I was on Broadway. Tickets on sale now at eventbrite.com and God's trying to tell you something.com. It's the theatrical masterpiece you've got to see. It's God's trying to tell you something. Oh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. So blessed to be here. Don't miss it. Team Downey is looking for a film production and operations specialist responsible for running operation layout of the production company, delegate and oversee household staff, grounds crew, and creative department staff, oversee employees across all entities of the company, time cards, pay slips, credit card use, and expense reports, experience in writing, directing, producing, and performing, must have a bachelor's degree of arts in theater, and 24 months of experience, job location, Venice, California. Salary $64,000 to $74,000. Send resume to hiring at teamdowney.com. Again, hiring at teamdowney.com. The conversation continues right now, right now, right now with right now. Dominique DePrima on First Things First. And before we launch into your tips or your thoughts for us, um, Cherie Syfex, tell us how to follow you and keep up with all the work you're doing. Yes, you can follow us on Instagram at Jeff Fax, J U S T T H A X. Um, our website is www.justthefacts, again, J-U-S-T-T-H-E-P-H-A-X.com. Um, and then you can get the book at secondactbook.com. So www.secondactbook.com. My husband's name is Tracy. My name is Cherie, last name Syfax. We own Booker's Restaurant in Philadelphia. So if you ever are in Philadelphia, please come by in West Philly. So there are so many ways to meet and greet us. Wow, that's good stuff. All right, what will you leave us with this morning, um, those on a quest for love or wishing to refine the love they have? I would say just always remember there are amazing men and women out there looking for love every day. So you be the love that you want to receive. Be self-aware, be accountable, understand how you impact people every day, both the good and the bad. Have an amazing circle around you to give you feedback on how you show up even to them. Sometimes we don't get that real new, real understanding of, of who we are and how we're showing up. I had amazing women that shared with me some of the things that I needed to work on. And so just always be open and willing to the willing to ingest both embrace both the good and the bad and know that again you can live the life boldly and abundantly at any age. It's never too late to find love. Yeah, it sounds like it's you know, never too find late to find love and never too late to find oneself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that's the first place it starts. The most important relationship we have with ourselves, and thank you for reminding me to say that, is the one with ourselves. Yeah. So um, we have a couple couple seconds here. What, what's the first step in this journey? For me, it was just self-awareness, realization of, wow, things aren't quite working out the way that I want them to. And I need to look inside of myself to find that. I can't find, I can't look at anything and anyone else. I have to look at me. Mm, yeah, well said. Well, um, Cherie Syfax, it's a pleasure to meet you, my new um, opinionated friend to take yeah. on relationships. The book is Second Act, Living Boldly and Abundantly at Every Age. So nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. Nice to meet you as well. When I'm on the West Coast, I want to make sure we connect. Let's do it. Yeah. And when I come to Philly, I'm coming to your restaurant. I am a foodie, that's for sure. Um, you know, we, I'm so happy to have you all with me, and we got a, a great show tomorrow. It's was supposed to be tax day, but it's not. Still, we have a financial wizard joining us, um, and we'll also be talking with an uh, Academy Award-nominated producer, director, Lisa Cortez. So looking forward to seeing you, uh, the Wealth Whisperer, Alicia Holmes, and, of course, a Talking Point Tuesday. I've been kind of lagging on my quotes lately. I want to leave you with one from Ayanla Van Zant today. She says... You have to meet people where they are, and sometimes you have to leave them there. <laughs> Tavis Smiley is up next. I'm Dominique Duprima. I'll see you on social media. History is now, and we are making it together. Until tomorrow, be safe, be well. One love.
KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. Thank you for joining us on this Monday. Also, two people died and at least four 